Hi, welcome to Slow Flow to Go with Core. So we're going to do a nice little bit of opening the body at the start of class today and then finish um, with some really gentle core exercises. So nothing too intense, um, but it'll get the core engaged, um, looking after the core and the lower back. So grabbing a couple of blocks, that'll be all that you'll need for today. Um, you can make do without them, but if you have them, they'll be brilliant. And today we're going to start standing for a change, so a little bit different today. Bringing the feet to hips width apart or a little bit wider if, if that feels more stable. And then if it feels comfortable to here, you can allow the palms to maybe open forwards a little bit, open up the, the chest, the shoulders, seeing if you can lift up out of the pelvis, drawing up through the crown of the head. And then maybe your eyes come to close. So if it feels okay to have your eyes closed, then closing them. It might feel a little wobbly at first, a bit unstable, but you'll probably notice that even though your body will move and sway a little bit, that um, you know it manages to stay, um, stay grounded and that your feet support you. If for any reason it feels like you're worried about falling here, then by all means keep a gaze sort of softly down to the ground instead. So in this position, allow your body to sway a little bit if that feels good. It can move forward, side to side. You'll probably find it naturally does this a little bit. When we close our eyes, our bodies find a way to feel where they are in space. So a little bit of movement's quite natural. And maybe noticing how those different points on your feet support you as you stand, maybe with that bit of swaying. So noticing how the heel of the foot, the sides of the foot, the bases of the big toe and little toe, all of those edges and little areas of support come together to allow the body to move a little bit while still being really solid, really balanced, really grounded. Allowing yourself to take a few deep breaths here, filling up your body as you inhale. Exhaling softly out through your mouth. As you inhale, thinking more about filling up the body to the sides and the back of the body. So rather than um, filling up sort of upwards and then the shoulders lifting, Thinking about the body expanding out to the sides, out to the back, out to the front. And then beginning very slowly to take your weight between one foot and the other. So both feet are staying completely on the ground, but you're moving your hips and your upper body to come, say, over the right leg. So the weight comes into the right leg. Then you shift the weight over towards the left. And as you do this, maybe becoming aware of if one side feels more comfortable, more balanced, if you favour one side more than the other. And maybe noticing any internal engagement that goes on in the body as you shift, what's happening inside, around the hips, around your pelvis, to help support you as you rock from side to side. If you want to, you can choose as you rock to come up onto maybe one toe or a heel, but keeping the other foot grounded so you're not worrying about losing your balance. And of course, you can keep both feet completely flat on the floor if that's better. You can open your eyes at any time. If it feels comfortable having the eyes closed, allowing the body to work on doing the balancing. 
maybe you notice a gentle engagement in your core as you shift from side to side, as your body keeps you balanced in this place. And then making your movements smaller and smaller. So you're shifting a little bit less to the left, a little bit less to the right. Until you find yourself back in stillness at the beginning. And taking a moment to notice how your body feels now. Does it feel more balanced in this middle place than it did at the start? Does it maybe feel more grounded, more solid? Taking one last inhale in this standing pose. And exhaling through the mouth. And then gently allowing your eyes to open. Interlacing the hands behind the back. So if you want to, you can bring the palms together or you can just have a loose interlace if that's better. And then as you inhale, allowing the hands to draw away from the body, the arms to draw away from the body. Bending the knees slightly, so just a small bend in the knees. Drawing the hands away from the body, lifting the arms up slightly, whatever's comfortable here. And then as you inhale, lifting the gaze, opening the chest. And then as you exhale, bringing the chin towards the chest, keeping a bend in the knees, and then coming into a forward fold. So the head comes heavy, gaze in between the legs. You might not come down as far as, as I am, or your, your arms might not lift particularly high, they might stay very close to the back, that's okay. On your next inhale, pressing through the bottoms, the soles of your feet to ground yourself down as you lift up. So as you lift up, keeping that bend in the knees, inhaling, allowing the chest to open, the gaze to rise. And we'll come through this two more times. So exhale, gently folding forwards, lowering down, head relaxes. Inhale, pressing through the feet, rising up, finding strength from the feet as you come up, opening through the chest, gaze lift. One last time, exhale, coming down. And then inhale, grounding down, using the strength of your feet against the ground as you rise up, opening the chest and then releasing the hands. Coming back to normal, you can give a little shake up through the shoulders. Maybe you take a few circles through the wrists. And then grabbing hold of your blocks and stepping into a wide leg position here. So taking a position where your legs are wide but where it's, you know, you're comfortable so you're not kind of straining or um, struggling to stay grounded. Getting the outside edges of your feet parallel with the edges of the mat and then taking your two blocks, one in each hand, they're going to come down to the ground at shoulders height so that they're right underneath your face. And then you can use those to adjust your feet if you want. On your exhale, taking a forward fold from here. So you can allow the head to be heavy and maybe there's space for the arms to bend here. Maybe they stay straight. If you're feeling quite open today, you might find that you can move the blocks off to the side and maybe your hands come down to the ground. Or maybe the hands move backwards towards the feet. So taking a few breaths wherever is good for you. If you are, if you are higher up, then um, that's absolutely okay. Using those blocks to support you. And, and allowing your head to be heavy from here. Taking one more breath wherever you are.
as you inhale. If you've moved your blocks out of the way, bringing the blocks back in. And then bringing the blocks just in slightly so they're a little bit closer to the body. And then we're gonna take a few little rocks from side to side. So bending initially through the right knee. And then up to center. And then through the left knee and up to centre. So you might find that this was quite good with the blocks in the middle. If you want them still further forwards, of course you can have them further forwards if that gives you a little bit more space. You might find that you want to move the blocks over to one side as you bend down. And then walk them over to the other side as you bend down. So just finding a bit of looseness through the hips. Don't worry too much if this is a really small movement, that's okay. And if you haven't got your blocks, then you may be moving on fingertips or something like that. And I'd suggest if, if you're sort of only just reaching the ground, that you maybe just stay with the little movements from side to side here. So having a couple more bends through the knees side to side, wherever you are. And then finding your way back to centre, taking a couple more breaths in your forward fold. So allowing the head to relax, maybe you stay on the blocks, maybe the hands come down to the ground. And then inhale, hands back to the blocks, heel toe your feet in a little bit so they're a bit less wide. Gaze comes down. And then bringing a block or two behind you, we're going to come down into a molasses squat. So you want the toes slightly out and the heels slightly in. So you'll want one or two blocks for this. So feel free to stack them or go with one, whatever feels good. And then you can either lower down, bringing hands to chest and lowering down, or you can bring hands in front, one hand in front, one hand behind. So feel free to come down a bit more like that, coming to sit on your blocks. And once you get there, you can arrange the feet, maybe they come a bit closer, if that feels good. Hands coming to prayer in the centre when you get there. And then elbows are coming inside of your knees, using the elbows to help open up the knees and chest drawing forward to come and meet the hands. So you might be on a couple of blocks here, you might decide to go without the block um, and to take this squat um, a little bit more actively. Um, it's entirely up to you. It can be quite nice to take this squat with the block if, um, if that's feeling good today. And then maybe allowing the eyes to close here, taking a couple of breaths, reaching tall through your spine. On your next inhale, opening your eyes, and then bringing your hands behind you, removing any blocks, coming to sit down. So you can take those blocks off to the side. And then from here, coming to about halfway up your mat, we're gonna lower down really slowly onto your back. So you might wanna bring hands behind, come down onto elbows or forearms, and we'll do a little bit of core work together from here. So knees bent about hips width apart, and arms down by your side. When you're ready on your inhale, allowing your right leg to lift up towards the sky. So it might not be as far forward as this, it might be kind of over here somewhere, that's okay. And then whenever you're ready, using your foot to draw some little circles, in there. So maybe starting by drawing some, some clockwise circles. Doesn't really matter which way you go, or swap in a little bit. And maybe you start with small circles and then allow these circles to get a little bit bigger. And then coming back the other way. So almost as if you're kind of drawing a spiral that's coming in 
in the other direction. Back to center and lowering the right foot down. So when you're ready, inhaling, the left foot comes up to whatever height feels good. And we'll do the same on this side. So it doesn't matter which way you start doing your circles, but starting drawing some circles one way, keeping the circles pretty small at the beginning. Now, while you're doing this, seeing if you can get a sense of connection with the lower back on the floor. So check, maybe popping your hands here, making sure you're not arching through the spine. And if you are, seeing if you can press your lower back into your fingers as your circles start to become a little bit bigger. And this is always a good time, whenever you're doing any kind of ab work, to check in with your breath. Are you still breathing? Are you holding tension in the jaw or in the face? Seeing if you can find a little bit of looseness and then change in direction and your circle comes in the other way. So don't worry if your circles stay fairly small and if you begin to get um, tired, you can bring down the foot at any time. So this is a nice gentle little bit of core, nothing too intense. Back to centre and lowering that leg down. You can give the knees a little kind of side to side here allowing the back to loosen up and the core to loosen up. And then bringing your right arm up and overhead, we're gonna take a roll over onto this right side. So rolling over when you're ready so that your head comes to rest on your arm and you've got your left hand in front. And then keeping that bottom leg bent, straightening out the left leg. And on your next inhale, seeing if you can reach the left foot as far away as you can from the tip of your toes. So this is almost like a little kind of hip hitch. So kind of lengthening the side body here. And then exhaling to relax. So it's a really gentle movement. You'll probably see on my hip that as I inhale and stretch, the hip moves down towards the toes. There's a little bit more length through the, um, the side waist. And then exhale, you'll notice it draws up again. So taking a couple more of those, reaching out with the toes, and then allowing everything to come back to normal. On your next inhale, reaching out with the toes, taking the hips down towards the feet, and then lifting the toes from the ground. So there's a few options here. You can either keep the toes lifted, keeping the hip drawing down away from uh, the upper body. Or if you'd like to, you can begin as you inhale and exhale, inhaling, lifting the foot. It doesn't have to lift very far. And exhaling, lowering it. Seeing if you can still keep that length through the side waist as you lower the leg. And when we're doing any kind of ab exercises, it's really good to do them as slow as possible. It can be really tempting to kind of, you know, blast through things like sit-ups or lift your leg really, really fast. Um, it's actually so much better for the core. You work so much harder if you can do it slowly. So seeing if you can do it um, nice and slowly, working one breath, one movement. And this is really great, this particular exercise, it gets into all of the, um, the sort of side abdominal muscles, so into the transverse abdominals, into your obliques. So um, yeah, really it's the, the one that produces the, the waist, um, and creates that, that nice shape in the body there. And really good for supporting the lower back um, and the hips. So if you get any lower back trouble, then this can be a really good way to, um, to look after your lower back as well. So one last inhale on this side, holding for a breath if you can. 
And then exhale, lowering down. Bending that top knee, bringing the knee to rest on the other one. And then we'll come over onto the other side. So using your left hand to roll over onto your back. And then same as we did before. So it'll be the left arm reaches up and overhead this time. And then taking your roll over onto the left hand side. So right hand comes to the ground. I'll turn around so that I'm the, the way around so that you can see. So it'll be your head leaning on the, on the left arm, knees bent, right hand in front. And then as you inhale, drawing that right leg away from the body, you can keep the toes on the ground for this hip pitch if that feels good. And seeing if you can lengthen the toes away from the fingers, away from those left fingertips. And as you do that, the hip will draw away and down through the body, opening up the side waist. Exhale, back to normal. Inhale, hitching your hip down towards your toes. Exhale to relax. Inhaling, hitching the hip down towards your toes. And exhaling, relax. Inhaling, reaching away. So really noticing a feeling of expansion coming through the side waist here. And exhaling to relax. So same as before, this time we'll inhale, lift the hip away. And then option if you want to, to lift the toes, either hovering from the ground, so you're welcome to stay with a hover. Or if you want to, you can take your inhales and exhales, lifting that leg up. So don't worry if the, the leg doesn't lift very far. Just seeing if you can keep it slow and controlled. And obviously as you come down, the toes are not touching the ground. So they're hovering like an inch or something from the ground as they come down. And you might find that one leg is a little easier than the other, that's often the case. So taking these nice slow leg lifts, noticing where your body's working. And continuing to reach out through the ball of the foot here, keeping length in the side waist. Inhaling one last time, holding for a breath if you can. And exhaling, lowering down, bending that top knee. If you want to, you can give a little, little pat on the glutes. So this is a really good workout for the glutes as well as for the side waist as well. So you'll probably feel it in, in your glutes on both sides. So nice way to release the glutes, heel of the hand, give them a little tap. And then when you're ready, rolling over onto your back. Once you get here, opening the knees wide, bringing the soles of the feet together. So normally we take, um, I encourage kind of a relaxed position in here with something underneath the, uh, the thighs to support. But what we're going to do today is as you inhale, we're going to draw the knees together. And as you exhale, we're going to open the legs. So um, this is a bit more of an active um, Sukta Baddha Konasana today. If that irritates your hips for any reason, of course, you can use um, hands to help bring your knees up or you can just stay with the knees either together or, or open. So if you're feeling any, any irritation in the hips, then um, don't worry about taking this one. And then as you exhale on the next time, we're going to lift the left foot from the ground. So right leg's going to stay exactly where it is. And then without moving the hip position at all, straightening out the right leg. And then bending the knee again and bringing the foot back down. And then we'll come over to the right hand side. So lifting the right foot and then straightening out the right leg. Bending the right knee, lowering the foot. So 
So coming through this a little bit on both sides, lifting the left foot, opening up the leg. You'll notice as I open out the leg, nothing else is changing position. Closing the left leg and lowering the foot. So again, noticing what does it feel like on each side? Is there one that's easier than the other? Is there one that's harder than the other? If at any point you're starting to feel discomfort in um, the hip flexors at the front here, or if you're getting pain in the hips, then you can absolutely take that supported um, uh, Supta Baddha Konasana. So if you've got your blocks or cushions or whatever you have, you can still pop those underneath the thighs. So if you're, if you're getting pain in your hip flexors, and you can still do the exercise lifting the foot and straightening out the leg. So that might just be that then when the, the leg comes back in, you don't get the pulling. So if you need those, then do take them. Otherwise, we'll come through one more round wherever you are. And maybe popping your hands on your belly, noticing the engagement in the core as you lift the foot, as you open the leg. And seeing again if you can keep that lower back connected with the ground. And whenever you've done your final round on that one, you can bring a hand underneath each knee, bringing them into centre, and then drawing the right knee into the chest. Maybe you take a few little circles with this right leg. A couple of times one way, a couple of times the other way. And then lowering the foot down. We'll come on to the other side. So just having a little feel into um, what you need to release um, the hips, the lower back. So just some really gentle core exercises for you today. I hope that felt, um, felt really good. Please feel free to leave a comment below if there's um, anything in particular that, uh, any questions or if you want something different for next time and then foot down to the ground. And then from here, you'll be glad to know, coming into our Shavasana, so you might want to take feet to the edges of the mat, knees knocked together. You might want to open out the legs straight to the floor, coming into a nice starfish position. Wherever you are, allowing your eyes to close. Deep inhale through the nose, feeling your body. Exhale, deep sigh out through your mouth. <sighs> and then allowing your body to really sink down into the earth to be supported. Finding heaviness across every point of your body that has contact with the floor. Allowing yourself a few moments to rest in this position. Maybe noticing how your body feels after that opening flow at the start, getting into the shoulders, the chest, the legs. Maybe noticing a feeling of strength or awareness in your core, in your lower back. Allowing your body to completely surrender to the mat, to be as open, as spacious as it possibly can be.
I'll leave you to rest for a little longer in this position, taking as much time as you can today to really allow your body to feel the results of the practice that you've done, to enjoy this restful pose. I hope you've enjoyed this class today and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Namaste.